Hi, welcome to the quantum entanglement fraud. In this video, I'm going to show you that the quantum entanglement experiment as given by the Bell inequality experiment is complete bullcrap. It can be explained with odd ordinary causal physics. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a simple computer simulation that the source code and executable will be published for free for everyone to see for themselves. Okay, and this is very important for my Patreon people to understand that I have to spend time in this. I'll explain that to them toward the end of this video. I would like to thank the YouTuber Karma Penny um, related to extremefinitism.com. His video is the only detailed video of the Bell Test Inequality Experiment. All the other videos I looked at, they're just kind of these general overviews and they don't explain the little details very well. The little details like, you know, what is coincidence detection? What do they mean by like 80%, 85% this and 25% that? He did a very good job. I recommend you go watch his video. And his video is also a debunking of entanglement. Uh, I think in the end, we're saying the same thing, okay? Um, he uses his probability, he uses hidden variables and the concept of the photon where I don't agree, I don't believe in photons. I use a simple wave mechanics and I use linear polarizers the way we did them in, in video T7. And I show using a very simple engineering simulation that you can get the same answers that they got without entanglement. Okay, so I recommend you watch both of them. I'm pretty sure they're both saying the same thing, but uh, the simulation shows a little bit more and I'll explain that a little later. Just to recap, in the trailer video T8, I, just, I demonstrated that the particle wave duality um, was nonsense. The physicists were treating the corpuscular nature of their detection device as the corpuscularity of light. In other words, they're attributing the corpuscular nature of their, of their luminous detector, what they call a photon detector, as the corpuscularity of light. They cannot do that. And I'm gonna, we have a demonstration at the end of this video um, for the photon detector, F-A-U-X, T-O-N detector, to show the corpuscular nature of a real detector. Um, that's at the end of this video. Okay, and the other reason that I kind of got into in the T8 video, why light can't be detected, its structure can't be detected, its fringe pattern can be detected because the fringe pattern is bigger than the corpuscular nature of the detector, but the photon can't. Okay, if there is such a thing as a photon, we can never detect it because if a photon has a small enough structure to be used to enable to image the structure of matter, like with X-ray crystallography, then there cannot be any instrument made of said matter that can have small enough structure to prove the existence of photons. Okay, this is essentially Nyquist sampling theorem. Okay, so the photon is complete nonsense. There is no particle wave duality. It's just physicists misunderstanding the very tools that they're using. And that the, all the journals publish all this crap just blows my mind. And there's idiots out there that say, I won't believe anything unless it's printed in a, in a, in a peer-reviewed journal. Really? So if a peer-reviewed journal told you to jump off a cliff, you'd do it? Really? People are not able to make up their own minds about things? Really? Okay, so again, this video contains a supplement to the T8 video. We call it the photon detector. I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, it's part of the software that will be released. There's a little explanation of it toward the end of this video. Also in the T7 video, we demonstrated that polarizers were not spooky. We showed that the triple polarizer paradox was easier to explain with simple engineering techniques. So I'm not using entangled particles. I'm using a wave. And just like a water droplet hitting the surface of a pond like you see in the picture, when you disturb it, you end up creating a wave ring that moves out from the point of disturbance equally in all directions. Okay, so considering these directions here, you have a wave front that's moving off in this direction and another wave front that's moving off in this direction. They're going to have both have the same polarity. Okay, and the amazing thing about this, if you consider the phasing of their real and imaginary components using Euler's equation, 
Um, this guy, they have opposite spins because they're propagating in opposite directions, so they should have opposite spin. And that's how an engineering would de determine the spin. Phys uh, quantum grease monkeys, they call something spin, but they don't really have an understanding of what it is. We engineers have an understanding of what spin is because waves have spin. When you look at the real and imaginary phasing as a wave propagates. So what we're going to do in our simulator for using this little blue diagonal to represent the quote unquote nonlinear crystal that's inside a Bell test inequality experiment. And what we have is some beam that comes down and causes this to emit a ring of waves, what they call an entangled pair of photons, which isn't an entangled pair. It's a complete wavelet, ringlet. Okay, in this case here, we're showing that the polarization is up and the propagation is to all the sides. Because our instruments are going to be to the left and the right, we're not going to consider cases where the rotation of the ringlet is uh, going you know, as rotating toward the right here. So instead, okay, so what we're going to do is we are simply going to show the propagation to the left and the right, and we're going to show that with these simple little sine wave cutouts that represent the signal propagating to the left and the right. And this over here shows that the polarization is coming out of the page towards you, that the ring actually propagates out and around in this direction. So we're only going to consider the rotation of the polarization in the vertical plane here. And we're, going to we're not going to show these rings anymore because they just get in the way. So here we have is our nonlinear crystal that's been excited and it pushed a wave ring off to either side. Then what we have here is we have our polarizing splitters with the detector and this one over here. And what we're going to do for our simulation, the software allows you to make different angles from both sides. But what we're going to do is we're just going to leave one at zero and make the other one movable between zero and 90 degrees. OK, and the simulation, how it works is you set up the number of runs. I don't know if you can see in the video, there's one million runs. We set the left polarizer. Right now, we're just going to set the left polarizing filter always to zero degrees. And then we're just going to spin the right polarizing filter between all of the case conditions. And then this is the detector threshold in relative amplitude. And then what you would do is click run, and that'll run through one million runs and then you give, make all the statistics. Here in the, this is the software under quantumentanglement.cs. Here you have the number of runs, the left polarizer angle and degrees, and then over here would be the right polarizer angle degrees, yada, yada, yada. So all we do is convert those polarizing angles into radians and then compute the sines and cosines of those polarizing polarizer angles. Okay, then for each one of the runs, we use a random number to determine the polarization angle of the emitted wavefront pair. And then we can convert those. We do signal amplitude times the cosine, signal amplitude times the sine, and that's what we compute here. Then what we do is we compute the, the amount of energy that or the amount of signal amplitude that passes through each sides of both polarizers. And this shows the left side computation. This is the energy on the left side going into detector zero. This is the signal going on the left side detector one that's just computed using simple dot products. Right below would be the right side, but we're not gonna bother showing it because it's basically the same code as the left. Then, once we have the signal intensity going to each detector, we run it through a simple routine, which does a random number detect. And this would be our detection left zero, left one, right zero, right one. And then what we do for last step is we just go through and do all the correlations. We see, gee, do we have double detect on either side? Do we have neither detect? There's more down below here. I'm not gonna bother showing them all. So here's our comparison. Up on the top, we set the signal amplitude to 158 and as you can see this is this is theirs for the same this is mine for the same pretty damn good this is theirs for the diff case this is mine for the diff case okay we're a little bit off here but that's no big deal because down here if we change the level to 166 we get much much closer to zero on this 
And I found that there's a lot of variations of the detector amplitude and signal level that you can get. You can get all kinds of solutions for this. So uh, my conclusion is that the results of the simulation are in excellent agreement with the results. The simulation is a crude approximation, of course. With improved detector noise modeling, there could be should be no problem reducing the slight mismatch. So conclusion and entanglement is completely unnecessary to explain the results of this experiment. Completely unnecessary. It's just normal engineering that you can explain this experiment. But here's an interesting caveat. The simulation shows that of the 1 million runs, only about 25,000 uh, 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 runs actually produce a coincidence detection. Okay, in other words, uh, each side of the experiment has at least one detector firing. There's also a very, very few that show two detectors on either side firing. Okay, uh, they don't account for those in theirs. I, I don't think so. Uh, the coincident detections are the only ones considered in the experimental results. And so there was a quarter of a million runs produced a detection on one side only. Hmm. A quarter of a million, 10 times, an overwhelming majority were one side detects. And there were 703 quarters of a million produced no detect on either side. The actual experiment cannot account for these because they don't know if something happened unless they get a detect. Okay, because we're in simulation, we can know when something was supposed to be there if it did or did not get detected. And from the video, uh, the vast majority of results are cases of detected at one side, but not detected at all on the other side. Can we simply dismiss these errors as errors? Okay, swing. The simulation showed these to be normal and expected. So in this video, I use simple simulation to demonstrate that entanglement is completely unnecessary to explain the Bell test experiment. It's just a matter of simple wave mechanics, simple model of polarizers, and noisy detectors. In video T8, the particle wave duality was also explained as noisy detectors, and which pretty much debunked the, the photon for reasons I stated earlier. Okay, in the next video, I'll show that quantum mechanics will never be part of a theory of everything. Okay, the software link for the zip file containing the source code will be near where you clicked on this video. If it's on YouTube, there should be a link. It may not be today. It might be in a couple of days. Uh, I don't have the link yet. I haven't posted the software yet. Okay, how to use the executable. On well, the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you how to use the executable. The first thing you do is click on the executable file, which will bring up the main GUI. This is what it looks like. This is for running the Bell test experiment here. You put the number of runs, the angle of the left polarizing filter, the angle of the right polarizing filter, and the detector threshold, and you click run, and the results will pop out down here. These buttons are for things where I was trying to find the optimum. That's where I came up with the 158 and the 161 using these guys. I'm not going to explain those. As they're just, uh, you can, if you've got the source code, you can go look through them. Over here, this is the photon detector that we'll be explaining next. This is the little addition to this software that supports video T8 and the double slit experiment particle wave duality nonsense. This is the photon detector that will come up. This green line up here is the detection level threshold. Uh, this white random noise that you're gonna see jiggling around on here, that's your random noise. That's the noise of the detector. Whenever the noise gets above the detection threshold, you'll see a dot appear in the accumulated screen on the top. Okay, so if you would just reduce your detection threshold to 99% by clicking this button here, you'll see spots start to accumulate in the field. Okay, but we don't want to show that. So what we're going to do is click um, and bring the threshold back to 100%. Okay, and then hit the reset button to clear the field to get back to this condition here. Then what you're going to do is you're going to click on the add fringe button, which will, all it's going to do is add a very small sinusoidal of amplitude, relative amplitude of 12. So it's only 12% of the noise and 12% of the detection threshold. Once you click on that, you're going to see this 
the fringe patterns start to form here. Okay, and you can see that it, it looks just like the, the, the experiments they show for the particle wave duality. It looks like the fringe pattern is being created by a bunch of particles. It is not. This is noise sampled signal. In other words, you've got a tiny little 12 signal of 12. You've got a noise of 100, and whenever they add up to go over the threshold, you get a dot. So this is essentially a noise sampled fringe signal. And this is why they come across with a very false notion that the, the, the detection is a bunch of photons. It is not. It is the noise of the detector. There are no photons. And again, I go back to the thing about Nyquist criteria. We cannot make matter small enough to be able to see a photon. These are big, very corpuscular molecules that eventually absorb enough energy along with their noise to eventually kick over and give us a spot. There may be, may be thousands and thousands of whatever the structure is light is being absorbed before these, these big titanic molecules kick over and give us a spot. Okay, we cannot attribute the corpuscular nature of matter to light. That is what they did. Okay, and this will keep accumulating, so keep resetting if you want. Now, if you take this where you, where you get accumulation of a few spots and you take these frames and you integrate them up, you're going to get exactly the same beautiful cleaned up images that they show. It works out exactly the same. Okay, and that's why I call this the photon detector. Pho for fake. Okay, it's very important that my Patreon people understand why I'm spending time on this. This is this video and the other one that's coming are not just to kick the theory of quantum mechanics in the teeth. Um, that's just the fringe benefit of this. Uh, fringe, no pun intended. Because if this phenomenon were a valid phenomenon, okay, ethereal mechanics could not explain it. It does not have a mechanism for explaining entanglement. And so I would have to stop and reflect. I'd have to either modify ethereal mechanics to explain it or cancel the project altogether. So by explaining this experiment in terms of normal engineering, I've cleared this obstacle out of our path. The next video, I'm going to show that Quantum mechanics will never, ever be a significant part of a theory of everything. And that'll be the final coup de grace for quantum mechanics. Um, the developments for the electrogravity paper, excuse me, are producing fantastic um, predictions that are basically loading all torpedo tubes because relativity is next. Thank you very much. No more voodoo physics. Uh, if you can donate, donate, become a Patreon subscriber. Oh, please, I would like to do this full time. Uh, if not, I'm going to pay for it out of pocket because this is going down. Uh, but I'd like to do it faster. Um, check out our distinti.com website. It's uh, reinitialized. It's renew. There's lots of explanation who I am, what all these theories are, and a simple way to assimilate all of we have. It's still under construction. I still have a lot more things to post there, but just keep checking back and I'll keep adding things. Thank you very much.